Hey guys, welcome back to Hanging Out with Lori. How are you today? I am good, thank you. Today is Fragrance Friday, and you guys know how I feel about Fragrance Friday. I love Fragrance Friday, and I am excited because Fragrance Friday has grown from just a small little thing that I started when I was on Instagram before I had a channel, and has now grown into four of us doing it and hopefully it will continue to grow and expand and people will continue to join Fragrance Friday because I love talking about fragrance. I love watching people talk about fragrance. I love the idea of people wanting to express their feelings about fragrance and so I hope you will go check out the other ladies who are doing Fragrance Friday. Janine at Free the Tomatoes is doing it. She is cultivating her collection, which I think is an amazing idea. Then Tara at Reed's Beauty Trip is going through all of the Rue perfumes her daughter left her, which I think is awesome because I don't hear a lot about Rue um, perfumes or colognes and I'm getting to learn about them and to me that's just exciting because you know that that is a brand that I have never had access to and then today my dear friend Mel over at Glitter Bling Bling on Instagram has started Fragrance Friday and I am so excited that Mel has joined in with us to talk about fragrance on the platform that I started Fragrance Friday and that just means the world to me. I am glad that she is doing this, that she has decided to become part of this growing group and as the new year begins, I hope any of you who want to do this with us that you join in. Let us know so we can put your name down below so people can come find you and, and watch you talk about fragrance as well. When I started on my little Fragrance Friday on Instagram, one of the first things I did was talk about the fragrances that I wanted to try. Now that year I had um, categories. I had mainstream, celebrity, and I think niche brands. And then last year I had 30 both in single perfumes that I wanted to try and houses that I wanted to try. Now that was extremely overwhelming having that many and I cannot even tell you how many houses I have tried. I know it's quite a few but I don't know off the top of my head. Today we are going to talk about the 30 fragrances that I wanted to try last year and then I want to share with you the five that I want to try this year. Yes, I have whittled it down to five this year because 30 was extremely overwhelming for me. Out of the 30 fragrances that I wanted to try, I was able to try 14 of them, which I think is amazing. Now, some of them I was only able to try in sample form. Some of them I was only able to try in the store, you know, by spraying it while I was in the store. Um, and so my thoughts on them are not as in depth as ones that maybe I have purchased, but I was able to try 14, not quite half of them, but I was close. So, you know, I'm pretty proud of myself for, for getting almost half of them because some of them I had a hard time finding. As I'm talking, you can see the 16 fragrances that I was unable to try last year. Not because I was not for want. <laughs> I was just unable to get my hands on them, get access to it. Um, be able to find them. So unfortunately they didn't, I wasn't able to try them, but I, you know, 
quite a few of these have been on my list for a few years. So would I still like to try? I'm sure a couple of them made the cut for next year, but not all of them since I have only selected five for next year. So yeah, that means a lot of these had to go away, but these are the 16 I was unable to try, unfortunately, but I will put their links down below for you in case you're interested in trying them. But as for the 14 I tried, let's talk about it. They're in no, no particular order. They're just ones I um, that were on my list that I got to try. The first one is Twilly by Erin Mez. I was not a fan of it. I got to try it twice. I had samples of it. I was hoping the second time, because it was cooler when I tried that one, I was hoping that I would really like it. I did not. The second one is Lancome's Poem. I actually own Lancome's Poem in order to try it. This one is just a little too powdery for me. It smells very vanilla, va very boozy, very inviting, but when I put it on me, I it it is not. It um it smells more like a grandma. And so I am not a fan of Lancome's poem, but it smells so good just sniffing the bottle. Lolita Lempica, I do not have a bottle of. I tried it in the store. I was excited to try it because it had been on my list for years and Unfortunately on me, it turned very sour. And so I'm glad I did not blind buy it because I had almost blind bought it multiple times. And I would have been really sad had I done that and found out that it just does not mix with my chemistry. Anna Sue's Secret Wish, I own. I um, was able to purchase this. It had been on my list for years, well, a few years. And it is just light and refreshing, very beautiful. The bottle is beautiful. I really like Anna Sue's Secret Wish. It's so, so airy and clean, very pretty. Oscar De Laurentiis Something Blue, I own that as well. This is very pretty, Very, it's a very floral scent very um inviting scent very light i i would wear this in the summer but it's just it's very cl it's a very clean floral scent christina aguilera's red sin definitely a fall winter scent very spicy very kind of dark kind a hint of gourmand but on me it takes on a somewhat of a powdery note. Very pretty. I like it. It's not what I expected though. Escada's Magnetism. I'm hoping I don't miss any. Escada's Magnetism. Beautiful scent. A fruity floral um, fragrance that is has a little <laughs> that is a little more mature um, in its scent profile, a little more inviting for, um, say, maybe an older woman. I would definitely say this is this is something that a more mature person would appreciate versus a young um, a young girl just because it has a little more depth to, to its fruity floral. It has a little more body to it. The next one I don't own, it's Dolce & Gabbana is the only one. Loved it. I loved that gourmand. I found it very personal, very um, sensual. The next one I tried, sort of. I did not have it in perfume form. I have flankers of it. I own flankers of it, but I do not have this pillar, and that is Moogler's Angel. I did try it in the body wash and body lotion, so I'm counting it as a try because I fell in love with it. I find it very, you know, fun and festive, but there is something dark about Angel. There's just a little bit of naughty in Angel that 
you wouldn't expect by the name. There's just something in there that's a little mysterious. And so, Angel, I've tried, yes, body wash, body lotion. You guys can say yes or no, Lori. <laughs> Sorry. But I'm counting it. I loved it. And I would give my eye teeth for a bottle of it. The next one, Kenzo One More. I talked about it last week. Beautiful, beautiful scent. Very warm, very inviting, very personal, very... There's a gourmand, you know, undertone to this. But to me, this is just very sexy. <laughs> very sexy. Black Opium Intense. Love. Would love to have a bottle. I talked about it last week. I just found it to be beautiful, more deep, more rich, more Definitely more personal than Black Opium, and I love Black Opium, so Black Opium Intense, beautiful scent. Gabriel Chanel was another that I got to try this year that was on my list. A lot of personal um, backstory to Gabriel Chanel's, Gabriel's, Chanel's Gabriel. I think this would be perfect for a younger person who wants to try Chanel. It's, um, there's a little more innocence to Gabriel. Um, I think it, it, it's definitely more inviting than say Chanel number no. five or Coco Mademoiselle. Um, it's, there's just, it's a little lighter. So someone who wants to try Chanel this would be, definitely be a good one for them. Flower Bomb Nectar. I got to try in the store. I actually had a sample, but it didn't make it here. It leaked all over my other samples, unfortunately. Loved it. It's the only perfume. I don't get a lot of compliments um, on my perfumes, probably because I don't see a lot of people. And... I don't have the personality to pull compliments out of people, but um, Flower Bomb Nectar is the only perfume that I have worn that I have gotten compliments on. Asked multiple times what I was wearing, and um, I ended up telling them, go get a sample, because I was in the store wearing it when people asked me, what are you wearing? You smell so good. That smells, that smells great. Flower Bomb Nectar, I would love to own it. If it's the only perfume I have ever gotten compliments wearing that I can remember as of late without saying, hey, what do you think of my perfume? That is a big hit for me. And then the last one I do not have as well, I had as a sample and that was Dior Addicts. Dior's Addict, that was also on my list. Loved it, beautiful, very, very sexy, but very personal scent as well. Um, that is one that I would wear for myself because it is just, it is sexy. So those are the 14 that I did get to try this year. I am glad I got to try them. You know, I own some of them and I'm glad I own some of them. Some of them I'd love to own and some I'm glad I don't own since they didn't work out for me. But you know, it was a good year. Almost half of that list I got to try. And that's not counting all of the rest that I did get to try that weren't on my list to try. So I think I did pretty darn good. Now for next year, in 2020, these are the top five that I want to try. And they range, you know, they, you know me. I'm, I'm just, I'm just me. I like to try lots of different things. La Nuit Tresor Nude. I love La Nuit Tresor. It is probably one of my favorite perfumes um, there that I have ever smelled, that I have ever worn. And I want to try La Nuit Tresor Nude. It has bergamot, coconut, and vanilla. 
Escada's Flor de Sol. When I saw this pop up, I was like, of course I gotta try it. It sounds fun. The, to me, I'm thinking it's a fruity, boozy summer fragrance, and I'd really like to try it. This one has been on my list before. That is Shalimar Souffle. I just want to try it. And that bottle from 2016 with the peacock. Yeah. Christian Dior's Dune. It also made my list this year. It's that palisander and that broom. What can I say? It was last year. It is this year. I want to try it. And the last one has a, you know, mixed reviews. It's Glistening Amber by Juicy Couture. I was surprised that a Juicy Couture scent made it onto my top five list. But as I have read about it, I am extremely intrigued by it. You know, it has that fruitiness to it, but it has incense in it. And I would never expect something that is called glistening amber to have incense in it. And so I wonder how that incense plays within those fruity notes, the creamier base notes. I'm just really intrigued by that. Despite the mixed reviews, it intrigues me, and so I want to try it. So those are my five that I want to try. Those are the 14 that I tried last year, and I will have links to all of them down below, including the ones I was unable to try last year. I hope you enjoyed this walk down memory lane. This has become a tradition for me, and I want to continue this tradition. How do you think I did with only, with trying out 14 new to me fragrances? How do you think I did? I would like to know your thoughts and feelings. Do you like any of them? Have any of them made it into your collection? Did you try it and not like it? What's your thoughts? You guys, Thank you for supporting me, supporting me through Fragrance Friday. I would love if you gave me a thumbs up. That helps my channel a lot. That will also help the other ladies' channels, hopefully, because it will drive um, people to watch them as well. Um, just thank you. You guys are wonderful and supportive and... I just appreciate all of you, whether you just watch me on Fragrance Friday or if you are new to my family. Just thank you. You guys take good care of yourself. Be safe, and I will see you on the next one.